Hi guys, welcome back to another overthrow forehand video. You guys are always wanting more forehand stuff. Well, you know what? We waited long enough, so long, that we've got the seven most common forehand mistakes that I've seen and how to fix them. These are the things I see all the time in lessons. I'm almost always correcting these. So, if you got a crappy forehand, you came to the right spot. Let's get into it. Drop. Okay, first mistake, and these are in no particular order. The wrist bend, it looks like this. Here, where you have your wrist breaking at a different angle than your forearm. The vast majority of the time, when I see this happen, I see this grip. Okay, call this grip what you want, because I'm not gonna do that on video. <laughs> For most people, this grip automatically turns into broken wrist, you can only throw hyzers, everything's a hyzer, and you have to just like juice it, and you have no angle control, right? So this isn't a grip problem per se, this is just correlation that I've seen over and over. But what you want is you want your wrist to be more in line with your forearm so that we can use this range of motion for our wrist, not here, because there's not a huge range of motion down there when you put your wrist cocked down like that, right? We don't want to use our wrist for angle control. It's too small of a lever and you change angles too drastically when you start messing with that. It's much better to change wrist angle with our big levers, either how much we bend over or here, right? If you need to make adjustments for like a steep hyzer or something, you can adjust it here and go more than 90, right? Or you can be flat and go 90. Dude, I'm about to pop this sucker. Oh, oh, oh it's to your right? My shirt's all. Oh, you had it, dude. I know, hold on. There are like 500 of them. There's one, it's around your head. Just oh, back around. he's Come on you. Me. What are these things? So we don't want to use this small lever. We want to use our big levers to adjust the angle. This is too finite and it's weak when you get your wrist because there's no range of motion here, right? Lots of range of motion here when it's in line with your forearm. So get a grip that helps you do that. Be here, start adjusting perhaps here, for sure here for angle control. Second thing, walking straight forward. So it looks like this. And this is what the result looks like. High hyzer, can't do anything about it. When you walk forward like this, now your angles are being adjusted. Now your hips are either up or they're down. And so now you're walking a fine line and everything's gonna come out this way and you're gonna arm the disc. So probably injure yourself. Think about what every other sport does. Think about tennis. They're here, they're turned away. They're facing this, that way actually. Yeah. So think about what every other sport does, <laughs> right? Baseball, they're sideways over here, right? Ready to pitch. And then they go. This foot is flared right. This is what you ought to do instead. Tennis, they're here, sideways. They coil the upper body and it's sideways. Guess what? Disc golf, straight forward. No. Disc golf, sideways. So our penultimate step or the step before the last step is going to be if you're a righty, you're gonna flare that foot out to the right and it's gonna be almost 90 off, right? And then we're gonna stride. And so the hips are closed here because we're sideways, the shoulders are closed. Then we stride towards the target and then we can open them up. That's huge. Whoa. Camera. Big boy. From now on, your last step, whether you walk up this way and then turn this right foot here, if you're a righty, with lefty, it would be, you can walk up this way, and now your left step prior to your last one is closed, off target. Either way, you're gonna start doing that now. To number three, dead arm. This is where you have your off hand doing absolutely nothing. 
You can turn sideways, you can walk correctly, but the arm looks like this. So we have no use of the shoulders. Instead, back to our other sports analogy, tennis, baseball. You're gonna use that offhand to help coil your shoulders away from the target. So it looks like this, here. And now we're here. You see Andrew Marwe do it. You see Eagle, you see all the good forehanders here. This offhand is very important in helping us get the shoulders turned away from the target so that we can open them later. It also helps create space away from the body. It can help coax this wrist back as we come over. Then when we start to engage it, we start to clear the curtain is a term here. We move forward and now the shoulder's going to open together. Now we're using our shoulders instead of just our right arm or our left arm, instead of just going right? We use all of it together and it's this clearing of the curtain. Like when you go to a guest's house and they have the shower curtain closed and you're worried somebody's in there. So you open that bad boy up, that's what we're doing. Clearing the curtain here. So we clear it. Use your off hand to help coil and uncoil the shoulders. That leads us to number four, reaching back, right? What do I mean by this? When you come up, people go like this and they have a huge pronounced move back with their arm, just like on the backhand and just like we were talking about on the third point, we need to coil the disc back. And that's what this offhand helps us do. Instead of reaching back, we end up stretching away from the disc, right? And the further our step is, the further we stretch away from the disc because we have more time to stretch away. So if you're doing this, what might happen is you might come here too high and now you have a big pronounced downswing and you turf oftentimes, right? Instead of that, you should do this. And we need to go over to this pole or something. You should do this. So this is a wall drill from baseball. I've got this handy instead of a wall. You can do it on whatever as long as it's stationary. Um, Patrick from our Discord sent this to me. Very important. Very important. <laughs> credit, credit due. Credit given. Credit due, credit given. All right, so what we do on our last stride is we've turned this foot away. Now we stride away from it. And however long this step is just naturally determines how long this you know, reach back is, right? So now we're turning, that we're stretching away from it. So then once we start clearing the curtain, that's when the disc starts moving, is once our shoulders start coming through like that. You don't punch the disc back there, you're gonna have some timing issues, as well as some swing plane issues. Phew. Thing number five, being too upright. You need space for your elbow to travel through. If you're upright, now you're gonna swing around, you're gonna swing down, you're gonna swing up, all these different ways because you're not creating a nice path for your body to move forward on. So it becomes very, very finicky on nose angle as well as release angle, right? So it's really important and check out our Andrew Marweed uh, slow-mo video with his forehands in there if you haven't seen it already but check out how far over this disc they are. They create loads of space here for the disc to swing through, right? And that's super important for not just speed, but consistency of angle, right? So you wanna be really bent over here, through that way. Good job. Number six would be dead leg or cement shoes, whatever you wanna call it. It looks like this and it's not pretty. You come here and you go, and now you've collapsed totally into it. This leg is the world's heaviest leg, and all you do from here is anchor with this back leg. You don't transition to the front leg, and it goes, and now you're all armed from here to here. And then you ask me why you're hurting, right? It's because you're not using your lower body. Right? Instead, what you ought to do is you need a smooth transition from the back leg to the front leg, just like you're throwing a ball. What to do to practice this? Throw a ball or other things. It's really simple, but you have to get this weight transferred over so that this hip can be freed up and useful. 
If your weight's too far back, this happens when you lean back as well, but if your weight's too far back, you're too forward with your steps, or you just don't transfer the weight. For some reason, you just sink down into this right leg instead of moving over to the left if you're a righty. Now it just pulls you back, and then your arm has to do all the work. Last one, thing number seven. And I put it in here because we had six things, and this is important, <laughs> but I don't have like a way to fix it, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you You're can put it. down below that it's clickbait if you want, but I just like seven way better than I like six. <laughs> but it's pushing. In tennis, we call it pushing. It's where you end up pushing the disc forward with your muscles instead of being loose and pulling the disc forward with the rest of your body. This is arguably the most important thing on the forehand, but also the most impossible thing to teach because again, this is about how you learn to be loose and how you learn to lag the disc and feel the power. If you wanna fix it, you've gotta be loose, and if you just so happen to have a disc and a pool, you could go stand in a pool and try to move your disc through the water, right? You're gonna know whether you're pushing that thing from that resistance so or if you're pulling it. Pull the disc. Yes. That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Right? So you can feel where the resistance is. You want your to stretch out a rubber band. You don't want to shot put the disc. That's just very quickly the seven issues that I see all the time in my lessons and that I'm always correcting. Very quickly. 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean that's a pretty up. thorough, <laughs> I mean, by the time you edit it down, it's going to be very quickly. That's so true. <laughs> so, that's as quickly as I can, giving you the most common issues that I see in my lessons. So, go forth and prosper on the forehand. <laughs>